This is the morning office for March 9th. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 51, verses 15 to 20. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them from, by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The Word of the Lord. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. In one of the authors I'm reading on silence, there's the thought that modern civilization does not know how to be silent. The even more interesting line that follows that is that the wound of mechanical words is part of what afflicts us today. Now, the person who was writing about this is, is a fairly conservative person socially and theologically, and so is talking about modernism in general. But I think even if we are somewhat more progressive in our way of thinking, we can see this in the fact that our modern life allows us to comment instantly on everything. Social media are going 24 hours a day. Uh, we can respond to any comment, uh, tweet, Twitter, that you can tweet back to almost anything immediately when it's said. There isn't a whole lot of room left for the Holy Spirit to move in us. Perhaps part of what we are being told to recognize in silence is the need for the length between thoughts, the length between words and comments to allow God to intervene and to moderate and to alter our perceptions. Perhaps the difficulty with modern civilization is that 
Our constant talk leaves no room for God to get a word in edgewise. And silence is the way we return to a knowledge of God that uh, enables us perhaps not to speak quite so quickly, perhaps not always quite so unwisely. I ask your prayers for the day, the world, and the church. Pray for those among us who are in danger, those who go into danger willingly for our, our safety and our well-being. Pray for those who are in danger without realizing that it is coming to them today. Pray that the holy angels will dwell with all of them in peace. Pray also for the world, for those places where danger is a routine part of daily life, particularly those places where people have never known anything but danger, that some vague knowledge of the peace of God may come to them. And pray that the church may play a part in that, in bringing reconciliation, bringing peace, bringing rebuilding to parts of the world where the causes of humanity have done so little to serve the needs of humanity. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers, that by reason of the frailty of our nature we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>